Good morning, pregame crew. It is Thursday, September 30th, 2021, the last day of September. It is 8.23 a.m. Eastern, 6.23 a.m. Mountain Time. You have arrived at the pregame show. I'm Chart Guy Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. Audio visual check, please. We will officially get started in seven minutes. But if you've been around here before, you know I don't keep my word with that and I just can't help myself and I start early. So hang on and we'll get to some TA here shortly. Hi, James. <laughs> James, you're anxious for me to talk, huh? Hey, Tammy. My girl, Tammy. How are you doing, Tammy? How was September? Hey, Topher, my SEC fraternity boy. You're not a boy, sorry about that. Hey, Mr. Chad, bad night truck, Judd, but I know you know I didn't mean any harm. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Judd. Hey, crypto moves. So tell the truth. How many times yesterday when you saw a supporter resistance did you think, gang fight? Hey, Zeki. Ian, Ian, how are you doing over there on the other side of the ocean? Hey, David. 523 and AZ. Well, thank you for getting up and joining us. Hey, Blue Dog David. Thank y'all so much for joining us. I promise I work hard every morning to bring you the best value possible <laughs> for the amount that you pay, which is nothing. But <laughs> I try to bring you just the best setups that I see. And remember, it's just my perspective and it's coming from my experience. So I'm sure there's always more optimal setups. There's only so many hours in the day. I do have a lot of scans that I use. I promise to try to find squeezes, inside bars, pre-market volume, earnings. I scrub the news every morning like a wild woman. So we have, uh, Let's see, we have GDP numbers, final GDP numbers, which means it could be corrected. And we have jobless claims due at in five minutes, in five minutes. So here's just example of our Slack chat and this is the news this morning. So I go through and I scrub every single thing like a neurotic crazy person that I am. So I look through everything and I try to use my business experience and my trading experience to see what is pertinent and what is not. Then if I see something like uh, space, SPCE, and I see, a, I see news that's pretty provocative, I will go check the chart and see if there's a technical setup that supports that. So I'm constantly looking at this. Even this morning, Snow, uh, Walter, he put price target of 535 and I'm like, no, 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 that, that that's not right. I thought it was 353 and I tweet the crazy man and I say, hey, that's not right. Someone else tweeted 353 and he deleted the tweet and corrected it. So I promise not only am I trying to bring you the best technical setups, I'm verifying the news and doing the best that I can do within the time constraints that I have. Oh, and I was like, thank you. Thank you, Topher. Yo, Ronnie. Yes, Fami is interesting this morning. Back to Compton. You've been sitting on your on your money, Tammy. Do you know that that is a great strategy when you're busy, when you're distracted? It is literally the most complimented area of trading or acknowledged area of trading is no trading. We are retail investors. We trade with our own money. We don't have to trade every day. And that's literally our biggest advantage that we have over the market, over prop traders and institutional investors is we don't have to trade every day. We can sit on our money, which is an act, a trading action within itself. And it has, shows great discipline, patience. It's actually a great strategy. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, Jorge. Hey, John. Yeah. Can you hit the like button? Let's look at FAMI. I saw a bunch of Twitter pumpers all over this. And when I say that, I mean no one any disrespect. It's just that I was a victim to pumping when I first started trading. I didn't understand what the game was. And now that I understand the game, it's painful to watch. Others get trapped. Uh, if y'all only saw my DMs just from this morning, from Twitter and our Slack chat, people stuck in CEI. I get, and they don't admit it, but I know from the um, the anxiousness and anxiety riddled post that they are stressed out and it's three o'clock in the morning for them and they're stressed and that's sad. It doesn't have to be like that. So yes, this is a beautiful move. 
Uh, yesterday was super elevated volume, 792 million, but remember that's share count and we're only talking about a 50 cent stock, so it's not a huge move. We're getting caught on the body of this little candle here that I just saw, where did I find that? Is that on the daily? Yeah, that gap fill. So that gap fill is at 4612. That will be a key level that you're gonna wanna put on your chart for today for FAMI, right here. Nope, that's not it. Yeah, that is it. I had it right the first time. That will be a key area for this stock today to get up and over because that was gap fill. So now we filled that gap. Now what? So on a pullback, 3690 will be important. But I want you to remember, it doesn't sound like a big number, but that is 20% below us. So just be careful. I forgot to tweet out. So how do I go to my saved tweets? Do y'all know how to do that? Unsent tweets, there it is. Okay, that one. Tweet. Okay, did I do it right? All right. So now I have to put this. Hey, TCGers, can someone put the pregame show in general chat? Oh, Tom did it. Man, y'all are so awesome. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I am ChartGalLori on Twitter. So I want to answer that one question. What was it? TDLA. Let's do it. TDLA. Officially start in one minute. Okay, did you mean something else? Some TDLA levels. TDLA isn't a name. Let me make sure I didn't click the wrong thing okay so tell me a oh tesla levels that's probably what you meant yep oh you're welcome hey wave trader michael veronica skill cap and ron stock boy <laughs> that's crazy tammy awesome yellow max roger hey cassia hey Ra. so we're here it's 6 30 let's get started let's chit chat about some stocks and some other things. I'm Chart Gal Lori. Again, I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. I get to hang out. Uh, we're popping here on news. We're popping, popping. Let's let's drill in before I do this introduce, introduction. Getting a little pop on this jobless claims numbers. If anyone knows what it is, please uh, post it. I heard, uh, I was listening to a trader yesterday say, if you were green this month, then that shows that you are really an evolved trader, that you can get green even in a red month. Because newer traders want to trade everything long and they don't recognize when trends change. So I thought that was interesting. So we got a little pop here on jobless claims. It'll still fit in with our larger picture. So now I'm gonna back up and let's start over, or not really start over. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. You can take a screenshot and this, I, I don't point this out enough, but I use this chart setup for swing trading and larger time frames and getting my thesis together. But day trading, a lot of times I will hide a lot of this. Day trading, I need less indicators. When I'm looking at the big picture, I need to know where the daily 50 MA is. I need to know, or are we squeezing? But a lot of times on day trading, I strip my chart down. That's totally the opposite of what newer traders do. You stay on that total, that constant quest for the Holy Grail indicator. And I can tell you it doesn't exist. The Holy Grail indicator is only price action. It's literally the numero uno. So strip your chart down. If you're, if you're struggling with trading, trade less, trade less charts. And I have got to do this soon. Um, trade less charts, use less indicators, and just trade less overall. And it's total opposite of what your body tells you. You know, I've given you the analogy before of skiing. When I was skiing, I went with an instructor and she's like, lean, when you're going downhill, lean downhill. I was leaning back. Well, that's the first way you fall. Your body, fight or flight, tells you to lean back. But you literally have to fight your body to ski. Same thing in trading. Your body tells you, bring more indicators, find the holy grail, you'll find it, it'll make trading perfect. Do the opposite, do less. I promise you, listen to this old lady, do less, all right? So ES, 
I'm gonna get rid of my chart setup. You found yourself at the pregame show. I go over the indices. We're still popping on those news. Crypto, commodities, movers and shakers of the day that I see. I give you setups. I don't give you triggers. I give you setups and you have to use that data and say, okay, when the market opens, we are constantly receiving more data. Now with that new data, how do I incorporate this idea and possibly find a trade in it? Again, we just don't shoot. Like, okay, I'm just gonna aim and shoot because Lori said go long X. No, we wait for a setup. Looks like gold is getting some traction too. All right, so here's the story of the day for me. So Apple hold of 141, we talked about it and I think I, I was banging my desk if you can hear that. 141 is key. Last Monday's low is still the key. Bullish, it's a bullish divergence to QQQ. I see that Apple hold as a bellwether to the market or a canary, if you will. It is telling me, whoa, 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 don't throw in the towel yet on QQQ. As long as Apple's holding 141, you're saying there's a chance. Yes. So that is crucial for QQQ. And what's also the story of the day for me is this inverse head and shoulders. Come on, computer. You can do it. This little inverse head and shoulders right here. Left head, it's not ideal, but it's there. If this confirms, which would confirm over 14926, then I am much more optimistic about the day. So if you missed yesterday, you missed some Compton gang talk. We talked Crips and Bloods. So I want you to, we talked about where support and resistance is where the gang fights go down. So it's gonna go down right here. So 1926, that's Compton, all right? So you're gonna have, is there any little men? I'm sure there are. I don't know where they are, can't find them that quick. Oh, there it is. Okay, so you have a man here. And thank y'all for indulging me if you think this is ridiculous, silly. I know it works for a lot of people, so I'm gonna go with it and just ignore me if you find this is ridiculous. So now one, four, nine, two, six, this is Compton today. This is where the Bloods and the Crips are going to fight it out. So whoever was a bear that covered down here, then they flipped to the other side. So now the Bulls have a little, a few more gang members, those most mercenary soldiers that just join whoever's winning. They're for hire. We are traitors. We are for hire. I'm a bear. I'm a bull. I'm whatever you say I am, as long as I'm on the winning team. So if this becomes the winning team, then it's going to go down at that line. And let's see who the bears bring to their side of the gang and who the bulls bring to the gang side. Then if we get through 14926, where's it going to go down again? Next fight, 15029. Then we're going to have, okay, we're going to move up here. Now, are the people who join the bulls, are they going to feel more confident up here? Or are they going to say, whoa, 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 I'm tired from this fight. I used up all the bullets in my gun, i.e. buying power, and I'm out, I'm out of bullets. And then the bears take over. Any, whatever it takes, I will be silly. Whatever it takes to help you understand this market and what goes down at these crucial levels. And once it starts clicking in your brain, you're like, oh, this is where they're gonna fight it out. And then you back up. You just back up and say, okay, duke it out. And I'm just gonna go with the winner. I'm gonna sit over here and eat popcorn. I'm gonna eat popcorn and then see who wins and then I'll join that fight. So as long as you can keep breaking it down like that, it'll help you. So NASDAQ two hour inverse head and shoulders is the story of the day for me. And it's also not as ideal on um, RTY here because typically the right neck stays below, the right shoulder stays below that neckline, but it's so strong that it went above it. So to me, that's some bullish divergence for RTY. Okay. so. I cannot mod the room or review chat while I'm ripping through these charts, but we have some amazing moderators that will answer your question. So if you're like, Lori, you're ignoring me. I promise you that's the last thing on earth that I do is ignore people because I'm here to help. I just can't monitor the room. So just know that I'm not ignoring you. If anything's important, I they will flag me and we'll get what we'll help you in any way that we can. So here are the Compton levels today. This is key. So ES got the four hour trend change. You see that? That's some bullish divergence. NASDAQ has not, okay? 
RTY has gotten the four hour trend change. We've got a little bit of a bearish wick up there, but we got the, the trend change nonetheless. And so did Dow. So now we're over here just watching this gang fight. Okay, can y'all just get your act together and either win or don't win so we can figure out what side? Because NASDAQ is part of everything. Apple is the key. It equals the whole IWM index. They're equal. That's how big the market cap is on Apple. And Apple is also part of ES. Apple is also part of the Dow. It's one of the major components of the 30 things that make up the Dow, the 30 companies. So Apple impacts all of this. So again, all eyes on Apple. And I don't mean to break, make it that simple. I op oversimplify things because I'm not an economist. economist. I don't bring bonds into the picture, even though they're playing a huge role. They're that The bonds are what are impacting NASDAQ and tech. When bonds are behaving the way they are, they impact the NASDAQ the most and bring it down. So I said, oh, don't talk about bonds. Let's talk about bonds. So this bleed down in bonds has been terrible for tech. We need them to get their act together and they just haven't been able to get up and over and get a meaningful four hour trend change. So we have a four hour EQ now. If bonds can get over 160, if ZB bonds can get over 160, we can, there's a 99% chance we can go to NASDAQ and see that it'll get over 14926. Let me say that again, ZB. If we can get over 160, there is a high probability that NASDAQ will get the four hour bull break. If you're newer to trading, that's too many correlations. That's confusing and I don't blame you. So that's why I don't overcomplicate it. And Apple's easier correlation for me to watch and say, okay, is Apple, how is Apple performing? It gives us so many clues. Okay, I don't know if I gave you the key levels. I did for NASDAQ, 14926, support 14711. It's everything today, RTY. We have resistance at 2251, support 2214. And I like to map it out. I'm going too fast. That way, if I am going fast, you could say, I don't understand her country accent, but I can pause and take a picture of that. So there you go, Dow. This is looking so, well, it was getting a rising wedge look to it, and now we're pulling back. Let's see if we hold the hourly 50 MA, the holy grail. The hourly 50 MA, let's see if we hold it. Where are we on ES? We are trying to get above that hourly EMA on ES. NASDAQ, we're below it, gotta get over it. RTY, we should be above it. Oh, uh, we're right at it. Okay, Bitcoin. So the, this is the level from yesterday. I left it on the chart because I wanna show you the role that prior resistance will serve in your chart. Prior large pivots, so very large pivots like this one, a pivot being support or resistance. And if you start think of it, thinking of it in neutrality and just say that's where a pivot happens, it will help you. You won't define it as support or resistance. It'll just be a pivot. So look at these pivots, 42638. So on this pullback, that was the area to go long. We came within $80 of that on a $40,000 dollar coin so that was a great area and this was support i mapped earlier and look the bodies of those candles stayed over that which is telling so we're doing some good things over in crypto land and for me it makes me scratch my blonde head and say well if bitcoin did this and es did this wouldn't that mean that nq could be a laggard play you see that so who's the bellwether here? Is the NASDAQ the bellwether to the downside and saying y'all are all getting ahead of yourselves because I haven't proven myself yet? Or is everything else a canary and saying, come on NASDAQ, come on, we're pulling you by the head. You got to get up and over that four hour resistance. So to me, crypto gives me another bullish divergence for the market and NASDAQ. And if, if all this doesn't make sense, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make it complicated. I just try to give you all the layers. And we know there's lots and lots of layers. So we got some Ethereum bullishness, so I need to remap everything. But I will keep that level on my chart because that was a key pivot. And the body of this, do you see that? It's important where the body, where we close and open, that's so, or the high and low and close and open, so important we hold that body of the candle, pretty crucial. So with Ethereum doing good things, hourly uptrend, four hour, 
uptrend, but not as convincing. But hourly uptrend, that's the story on crypto. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, gold, just reading the game comments. All right, gold. All right, I did something pretty bold for me, but you have to know that I am viewed as a, I don't want to say a, a C, oh, let's say a seasoned technical analyst. I'm not going to call myself an expert, but I'm a seasoned technical analyst. And that's why y'all come to me and say, hey, Lori, look at this chart. But always know that every seasoned analyst has a mentor behind them or someone that they go to for advice or look up to. And so every day, if you're like, Lori's copying Dan, well, he taught me. So of course I'm copying him. So Dan and his video last night, great video wonderful nuggets i would say it's probably one of his top videos in the last month if you didn't watch it go watch it on repeat the oversold bounce things that he goes over we talk about all the time about counter trend trades have a higher probability of getting stopped out but the risk to reward is more favorable he drives it home yesterday so i would go watch that video but he talked about gold looking for this weekly higher low so we're looking for that weekly higher low so I did something bold for me because I have not been a gold fan. And I posted this over in, if you want to go view it, TCG members. Okay. I posted my entry two hours ago in gold. So if you saw that and you, you took that with me, you should be up nicely now. I was bottom fishing the 1721. My stop is at 1720. I posted my entry, I posted my stop, and now we're testing 1733. I have micro contracts. So I have multiple contracts I can scale in and out of, and I don't plan on looking at them for a while. They're in my swing account, and I'm gonna see if this is the bottom of gold, because gold has just been spat on, or whatever, if you will. So 1733 is key resistance, I have a position. Oil, oil does this all the time where it breaks support and then bounces. So the body of this candle is holding over 7374. So that's good for now. So the resistance, I'm trying to think of what's today. Nat gas inventories today. So it had a wonderful bounce overnight. And Joey called that play by play over in the commodities channel as well. And I was getting my hair done and I missed the trade. One, one, who cares? Okay, so oil is looking pretty weak here we had our catalyst yesterday with the oil inventory and on the four hour i would say this is still a hold of this eq so that's the story right now this new low of 73.58 does not a bear break make so now that's the level now to hold to stay in this four hour eq apple Key name for our market must hold 141 daily inside bar bullish divergence to QQQ key chart key chart key chart you're like shut up lady all right so let's zoom out let's look at this yellow bar which is probably the number one question in the chat room every day in the YouTube chat what is that the yellow candles so hourly it's an inside bar for whatever time frame you're looking at we're looking at daily let's see up here daily daily inside bar yesterday we closed within the range of the prior day tuesday so today is showdown time now it's possible that apple could stay within this right now i don't get that feeling from the market right now with this jobless claims affecting uh everything bullishly so uh well, let's see you might get a trade out of apple today i will be watching apple so as always, the majority of the time, here are the charts I'm looking at for the day. They're over here to the right because I have all my levels mapped. I have my charts ready. I'm ready for the day. And I will be looking right here at Apple. All right. So here's your key levels, support and resistance. I'm looking long. If you come down in this area, 142.50 area, I would love to go long in that area. Adobe. Okay, Adobe, I've been calling out for two weeks now, like where is the bottom? Not every day, but we've talked about it on multiple days. So this is a dump, dumper, no, dumpster. I'm normally a good speller, I guess. I'm just not a good speller at four o'clock in the morning. So the daily's oversold, we are at 25 RSI. I took some put credit spreads yesterday why because i don't know where the bottom is and at a daily rsi of 25 i like my 
uh, the odds are in my favor for put credit spreads, meaning I sold the October 15th puts saying, I think it's going to go sideways or up. So that gives me of the three possibilities, I get wins on two of the three up or sideways. I get a win. If I just buy calls, I only win if it goes up. So I hope that makes sense. So since the market hasn't figured out its life yet, I went with the put credit spreads. So here are your key supports and resistances. I like this to the long side and it could just, and we have a squeeze on the hourly and it could go right below 575 and still bounce. I'm not gonna sell. If it breaks 576, I'm not gonna sell. I will probably hold it to 574. I would give it a couple dollars because this is a swing. This isn't a day trade. So I will set an alert. Tell me if this goes below 574 and I'm gonna say close and I send myself love notes, close PCSs, okay? A-T-E-R, this is my least favorite setup of the morning because it's not my style of trading. So always understand that if I'm kind of the blase on something, it's also because I just don't like, I don't trade these type names often. I traded Grom yesterday and it made me feel grimy. Grom made me feel grimy, I like it. So I, I won't, I'm like, what are you doing, Lori? That's not in your trading plan. This is not what you trade. And you know, sticking to my rules are so important for being consistently profitable. But what I like on this is a daily EQ. So we have this daily EQ. Nine fourteen. I like the risk to reward of bottom fishing. This nine forty five. So nine forty five to nine fourteen for a potential swing. This is a Reddit name, and it's high risk. Uh, Denzi will be going live in the room in eleven minutes, and I'm pretty far behind today. So just know. I saw this on a pump this morning, and this is not a queen of the mountain name. Let me be clear. This is the opposite of the queen of a queen of the mountain setup. But I want to show you what these pumpers do. They will pick names like this. Look at this volume. 43,000 shares yesterday. 43,000. Do you know that 99% of TCG members could totally move this entire name wherever we want? 40,000 times $2, $80,000. I can move this wherever I want. We, any of us can. This is the type of crap that people get stuck in. And this is what I meant by people getting hurt, getting burned, following Twitter gurus and like, oh my God, it's a penny stock. I'll get rich. No, you're going to get hurt. So they, they can pump it up after hours with their money and then they can turn and short it. They can hurt you. So just be careful with names like this. CEI, speaking of being careful, talk about Twitter gurus, furus, lack of gurus, lack of brain cells. These people, not the traders, I'm not talking about them, the people who take advantage of newer traders and their lack of uh, market knowledge. So here are your levels on CVI. There will be tons of TCGers who trade this. I'm not saying that only inexperienced traders will trade this. They just get sold the story that this is going to make you rich and they buy and hold. Meanwhile, the re the professional traders are scalping the crap out of this with almost a billion shares traded yesterday. So there's your levels for CEI. Have fun. D-Dog. I sound salty this morning, don't I? D-Dog, four hour inside bars. I like this tightening range. I like this if NASDAQ can break to the long side and you can see it's one of the names I'm watching above 139.31. I like it to the long side and I like a pullback buy to 136.92. HD. Now, I don't know if we're going to get another daily inside bar. This one kind of has me on the fence. I freaking love this weekly chart. This has been a uh, swing report name. We killed it. It is just it has a squeeze. It's beautiful. But we had such a large range on Tuesday, daily inside bar today. Let's, I would love another daily inside bar and then trade a lotto on it tomorrow on the break. But it, it's set up nicely. You can trade within this range and say, okay, a pull back to even, let's see, 3367. 3377 was a double bottom. So if we pull back to that area, it could be a bottom fish buy and then just stop out if that's lost. For a potential bull break trade fdx these are dumpster diving special dump dumper i did it again okay i'm not even gonna correct it that time i'm so out of time 
Okay, so FDX bottom fish potential. This thing is beat up and we're looking for an oversold bounce, high risk of getting stopped out, but nice risk reward. Those are your levels. On this one, I think we had another level close by, yeah. 220.80. So on Adobe, we don't have a level right below us if we break the low of yesterday, but on FDX we do, which is very intriguing. So we have levels below 220.80 down to 217.40. So I like that for dumpster diving. Microsoft, Microsoft daily in sidebar. Microsoft is super important to the market as well. Just not quite as important as Apple, but man, this could get the job done. If it can break bull, it could pull NASDAQ with it. So I like this for potential long. So here are your levels. This may be a bottom fish area, 284.61. Do your high and low bar business. Do your uh, equilibrium setups. Do your back burn. You know the different setups that can make this trade viable. It's not just buy and hold. Y'all know what to do. And if you don't, join TCG and we'll help you find out what to do. Netflix. Well, this worked out beautifully, didn't it? This is all my graffiti from yesterday. I kept on the chart. We were watching this downtrend, this potential daily bull flag. We confirmed, and look at that butte. Look how we the body got caught up on this wick. I love when that happens. So I'm gonna keep that wick on my chart as an important level. I have a position in Netflix, and I hope NASDAQ can break bull so we can just get up and over yesterday's resistance. Still on my watch list, I have a position, P-A-L-T. I've been calling this out in the room and look what it did. Ah, I just wouldn't let myself take it this morning because it breaks my rules. But I've been posting this one around $8.44 8 is, $8 is when I posted it and look at it go. So $12.39 may be a top fish level for those of you who missed that long space. Space had news, they're no longer grounded by Papa FAA. Doesn't mean this name will fly. People love to hate this name. So 15 minute, there's your double bottom. So wait for a high, a low bar setup if you wanna go long this, but I just see the bear pressure on this name. I don't like trading it to the long side, so I'm gonna stay away from that trade setup. Snow with a pretty big upgrade to 353 this morning. Well, I guess, well, it is, it's closed at 293. It's pretty good. This name likes to run. I've put it on my very dangerous, very volatile list. So maybe a pullback high of low bar setup on snow. It could yield some pretty good results. So snow only for the experienced trader. It's very dangerous with the spreads and the volatility. Tesla daily inside bar bull flag potential. Come on, Tesla. Love this chart. Love this chart. Does trading make y'all this excited? Or am I just a weirdo? Don't answer that. Like Tesla to the long side. UPST. We have, come on. Squeezy on the four hour tightening range. If QQQ gets going, you could look for a long on UPST. Here's that squeeze. It's firing to the downside right now. But I want you to watch this key hold of 50 RSI. Isn't that fun? Isn't that pretty? Watch this one. Spy, here are your levels. QQQ, let me correct the levels. Well, I'll add a level, how about that? All right, now what do y'all wanna see? Google. Google got some news yesterday and it underperformed the market. So. You may want to look at it if NASDAQ gets a four hour um, trend change to the upside for a possible long, but I'd rather go with the, the strong ones, Tesla and Netflix, than try to go with this. This has been super weak. It had news yesterday and then it just, it bled to death. Okay. Inside bars are just tightening ranges. So um, let me show you one of my favorites that we had a few weeks ago. Not that. Look right here. We had two daily inside bars. So on a firm, we popped up on that Amazon news, or I forget which one was Amazon was accepting payment. Then we started tightening. So then this range, this candle range from September 14th stayed inside that candle range, okay? Russian nesting doll, it stayed inside, okay? Then the next day, that price range stayed within the prior day's range. So now we've got this super tight range 
of price. And when we break, we typically have explosions to the upside or downside and nice follow through. So that's what an inside bar is. All right, one more. BBBY, it's beat the heck up. If you're in it, I'm sorry you held through earnings. It's a binary event and this type happens, but this is getting slaughtered. There will be a bottom fish on it, but it won't be me. 1589. Oh, look what we're doing. We're in gap fill territory. So the magnet on this thing. Oh, 1538. There we go. That's a magnet. So gap gaps can act as magnets. So 1425 is a support in 1538. So now let's go to current price action. Let's see what it's doing. So 1538. At that level, the gap is filled and it may be an area to go long. So that's pretty interesting, but you still need to wait for a stair step pattern to stop this bleed out. So 1538 is the gap. All right, that's it for me. Denzi starts in two minutes. Thank you for joining me. Join us tomorrow. Bring a friend. Use stop losses. Thank you.